Good afternoon, and thank you for tuning in. Um, alongside Jan, Jan from New York City Saves Money is with me today. And um, I couldn't help but notice um, the other day when I went to do some shopping at, at Publix, because I like to go for their BOGOs, their buy one, get ones. And I happened to buy a seltzer water. Now look at the title. Waterloo. So when I walk up to it, what immediately comes to mind? ABBA, the song, just like that. So here I am trying to pick out whatever flavor waters I want, and I'm hearing the song in real time playing in my head. So, but you know, they were... They were one. They were a really nice group, especially back in the '70s, which was their pinnacle of their career, and a little bit in the '80s. But there really isn't any song by them that I can think of that was bad, you know. Um, and 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 you might agree with me too, Jan, that each song is different. Oh, yeah. Hi, Steve. I, when you said Waterloo and you picked up that, that can or oh, bottle, whatever, but the first thing that came to my mind was the same thing, Abba. Yeah. yeah. Steve, yeah. I love, still do, love them then. They have lasting power. Um, Steve, I, just, I have to mention a trick when it comes to uh, stress. That band for me personally comes to mind. Like, you know, you have a day where you know, it's just like you're off. You can't identify it. You don't know what it is. Something's not 100% or, or somebody says something silly that, that you just want to not think about or you get some questionable mail, whatever. My go-to, I'm telling you, and anyone listening, by the way, hi, everybody. Go to your computer, your phone, whatever it is, method of listening to music, this platform is one of the best for that. And in my opinion, what works for me, Janet, anything ABBA, especially their, you know, hits, golden hits. I just like to just let it roll, let it roll. That's um, it. Hold on. I have a... Oh, sure. That's no problem. I'll be talking to the folks for a second, Steve. Okay. I'm coming. You know, there are so many methods to de-stress. You know, a lot of people like, you know, first thing, you know, they, they run to is, you know, maybe some sort of a, I don't, I don't know. I'd rather go the natural way and de-stress first either with exercise or with music. And I have found for me that ABBA is the trick. And Steve is 100% right with the uniqueness about it. For example, I have such really fond memories of the song Dancing Queen. Because um, my mother, bless her soul, she used to love to ice skate at Rockefeller Center. Now, I used to roller skate, but she liked to ice skate. So she would go ice skating, you know, my siblings. And I would step back, and I would watch them all skating at Rock Center, and I'd be standing up. And I never forgot when they were playing Dancing Queen and just watching my mom glide around back and forth. And Dancing Queen was popular exactly at that time. So every time I hear it, and I was 17 at that time. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm saying, Steve? So like really like hit home. So for me, you know, it just goes to show about music. And how about that song that they did, Thank You for the Music? I, I love that one. That's a good one. That's actually one of their later songs, like toward the time that they disbanded. Yeah. Uh, most people forget that. Benny, Bjorn, Agneta, and Anna Frieda, they were all married at one time. And that's where ABBA comes in. It's their initials. Um, I was always, I mean, again, I like all their songs. There's not any that I don't like. But my, I always was a fan of SOS. Yeah. And I know that it was not one of their bigger hits. But what I liked about that one is it, it had such a unique sound to it. It transitions about three or four times in the yes. song. And um, 
I do like songs that transition. I don't always want to listen to one song. No. On that evening thing. Yeah, you're right. And then, you know, Knowing Me, Knowing You, that's another one that I liked. I personally, um, in my household, my parents had two ABBA albums. They had Boulez Vu, oh. and they had the Super Trooper album. Oh, nice. So those two albums, especially any of the songs that were hits, yeah, I already knew them, you know, and that was also a little bit more disco-y for them as well. That was a little bit more disco oriented. If you ever get it, if you have not heard any of the songs on either one of those two albums, it's a little bit more disco, post disco oriented, like Lay All Your Love on Me, On and On and On. Super Trooper is pretty good. Um, I'll tell you one that's got disco written all over it Does Your Mother Know? Oh, yeah. Olay Vu has got disco written all over it. So I am very, very knowledge. I mean, I'm knowledgeable about all their stuff, but I'm, a, but I know those two albums because that as a child, I grew, I grew up with a lot of late seventies, nineteen eighty, eighty one music. I'll describe. I'll describe what I'm saying. Donna Summer, Blondie, Rod Stewart, Queen. Jefferson Starship. Now I got into the disco side of things through my mom. So that, and I do like disco. I know a lot of people have downplayed it and said it's awful. And I understand why, because of, you know, the orientation that got into that genre of music back in the day. But when it comes to music, I don't like to discriminate. Right. I like all kinds of music. That's I mean, right. there is there is a couple of three genres that I won't even bother with, but for the most part, 80, 85 percent of this music out there I love. You know, I talk about, you know, on my live that I talked about, um, you know, me growing up in the nineteen eighties. I they they were referred to as hair bands. Um, that's just a title that they gave it, but. Motley Crue, Poison, Rat, Dokken. All the good stuff. <laughs> um, you know, S Slayer. Anything, any of those groups that had, you know, Skid Row is another one. All of those groups, and I may be leaving a couple of three out, but all of those groups in general, that's some of the stuff I used to like to listen to, along with the Top 40 stuff that was out at the time. Now, Top 40 did go down the tubes for me probably after 92, oh, yeah. primarily because of the grunge. I can't do grunge. I'm sorry. No. You know what I noticed, Steve, in my case? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, being a little well, 16 years older than you, uh, I have to say this. Like, I lived through, like, these bands during, as you did too, but you were younger, real time. But, and I loved them, I liked them a lot then, but did I love them as much as a grown, mature adult? No. I have much more of an appreciation of the music, and I, I personally can't seem to find that right now. Although, don't get me wrong, there are some covered bands that do an excellent job. Mm -hmm. But I, I haven't found any new creations that, for me personally, have grabbed me yet. I haven't. So kind of like stop for me in the nineties, two thousands a little too. Uh, I don't know. Well, most people would never think this about me. And I do like classic country as well. I grew up with that through my parents. And of course, you know, my sister being of a seven being of the 1970s and eighties. And I listened to what she listened to as well. And then as I got to be, you know, of, of age, I started listening to the 80s music on my own volition. I just, you know, I went with it. But my, most people would never realize my main listening area of music. People would never see it in 100 years. I like anything that's club-oriented, disco, house music, 
uh, high energy. Yeah. Anything that you would hear if you go to a club, Studio 54 based type thing. That's what I really, really like to listen to. But I'll listen to other things too now. But because like I said, I don't, I don't discriminate when it comes to music. I, my musical tastes are eclectic. Apparently uh, mine too, because let's think about it. Like when we intro the show, I jumped right into my like really love of ABBA. But yet on the other hand, I could also turn on Metallica and love that too. I mean, my, my taste is de definitely eclectic because for me, Janet, it's like just box myself into one thing. And as Steve personally knows, of course, I love music from the 1960s. I was a little girl. Yeah. But yet, because I would post a lot of the 1960s songs that I enjoyed as a little girl, there might be a few people that might have thought I was 39 years old in the 1960s. <laughs> I was a kid. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, 1959 is 15 years before I was born, but... I like posting a lot of fifties music. They don't say that about me. They just say, Oh, well, how old is Steve? What does <laughs> he know about this particular genre? Well, you know, I've been listening to it for a long time. Um, for some reason, the the, you, the way you are about the 1960s is how I am about the entire decade of the 1950s. It's not just little bits and pieces. It's the whole decade. I like what it represented. You had people that cared. You had parents that were a little bit on the strict side about how they raised their kids. Yeah. Back then, kids did not talk back to their parents. No. It was yes, sir, no, sir, okay, and it was left at that. Just and that one look from them was enough. <laughs> right. You know, and, and I and I grew up with that 1950s style because my parents were of that era. So that's how I feel about the 1950s. My favorite musical area in the 1960s will always be the early 60s because to me it sounds like 50s music slightly refined kind of like disco was to post disco the same type feel rock and roll versus post rock and roll if that makes any sense but i i prefer the earlier side of the 60s over the middle and the latter not that i don't like that period it's just i prefer the earlier side better but that's me but I don't know. To me, it just seems like it's a, a time of the 1960s that most overlook. Yes, agree. Yeah. And I don't know why. Maybe because of the, uh, well, you know, we had that, you know, terrible thing that happened to the president. And then, of course, uh, then the Beatles came in, you know, we had the British invasion. Yep. So somewhere prior and in between the whole thing, something got lost in the translation of and there's nothing wrong with the British invasion, don't get me wrong, but some of the stuff that kind of got glossed over. So I could understand why it's like, wait a minute, there was a lot of other stuff that came out like from 61, 62, 63. Uh -huh. And those things overshadowed it, in my opinion. Yeah, 1960, even all that, that 60, you know, one, two, three. Yeah. Four, four is a mixed bag. Four has got a, Four is a transition year. British music, the sound I like. You had so much going on in 64. It was a transition year. A lot was happening. Um, but, yeah, the early 60s to me and, and everything you said, the Kennedy incident, everything that was going on, you know, that's not something that every one of us wants to remember, especially – if you were a, a kid or a teenager in that period. Yes. So, like me, I was in kindergarten. I'll never forget that day. I'm not right. even going to get, get into it. Let's just say that the nuns and priests were hysterical crying and I was in kindergarten 
and we're looking at each other like what happened and felt like literally like the earth stood still. Mm -hmm. And all we knew was that all of a sudden we were rapidly dismissed and there were our parents, everybody in the street crying. Mm -hmm. That is my memory of that day. But you know what, Steve, I learned something about you. And as well as I thought I knew you, I did not know this until a few minutes ago because of a beautiful picture um, that we were discussing uh, from, let's say, the late 50s, early 60s. I did not realize, Steve, that you enjoyed every aspect of the 50s. I thought it was just the music. Not that that's minor. Uh, I thought it was just the music and maybe, no. you know, the food or, or the you know restaurants, or, you no. know, stuff like that. Movies. No. All of it. All of it. Amazing. A kid that was born in 1974 mm -hmm. yeah. really, really appreciates the 50s. What, 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 do I, what do I have to go on? Let's see. I am not a crook. A decade, a decade that had two, I mean, a year that had two presidents. Okay. Um, yes. The year that disco was beginning. It really was if you stop and think about it. I mean, if you go back to Soul Train, The Sound of Philadelphia by MFSB is early disco. You had some really good songs in the 70s, Steve. And, uh, you know, that was like, in my opinion, uh, the decade of the 70s did hold some, you know, really great music memories mm -hmm. for me anyway. Yeah. You know, and like today on the way to, I went to BJ's this morning and I'll always love my mama by the intruder starts playing. Oh. So I'm listening to the song. It's about six minutes long. And I'm listening to the the riff, you know, not the riff, but the, the, the bass line. And I'm listening to it. Dun, 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 and I'm listening to the song. I said, wait a minute. I said, this would, I said, I would consider this on the early disco side as well. Oh, yeah. Another one that's got early disco elements people forget, The Love I Lost by Harold Bowen and the Blue Notes. Most definitely, Steve. You know. And I'm about to share a little bit of trivia information with all of you that you may or may not know. Uh oh. MFSB, mother, father, sister, brother that did The Sound of Philadelphia, the theme to Soul Train. There was an offspring of them called the South Soul Orchestra. Oh, yeah. They are related to MFSB. It gets better. Wow. Then you had a. Then you had another offspring called the Ritchie family. Yeah. And they were, they were known for that song. It's the best disco in town. Funky yeah. music. You know, the one I'm talking about. Yes, they do. Probably about 76 or seven. Right. Again, First two years for me. another <laughs> offspring. So the Ritchie family, MFSB and South Soul Orchestra are all one ball of wax. If that, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's something I wanted to share with you guys for those of you that did not know. And a lot of you probably don't unless you're music inclined. You know, I didn't know this until about when did I find out? Probably about 10, 11 years back is when that was told to me by somebody. So, yeah. So the next time anybody out there, you heard too much negative news or whatever, or, or just read a letter you didn't care for, run to the music. <laughs> Play something, yeah. That's it. Just that simple. Play one of your favorite songs, group. I have news for you, Steve. In a little while after our recording stuff, I am going to put on some ABBA. Thanks to that drink of yours. <laughs> Oh, Waterloo. <laughs> Waterloo. <laughs> now, Waterloo is what broke them in here in, in the United States. They were already an established group overseas because they had some other, they had another song called um, Ring, 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 Ring. And it's good. It's and, it, and the lyrics go, Ring, Ring, why don't you give me a call? And that thing, I think that come out 73 and another one they did, um, I can't remember what the other one was right off. There's another one they did called So Long that was good. So, yeah, put on some ABBA. 
find your their greatest hits if you can find it. Hit the play button. Hey, let Steve and I know your favorites in the comment section below. Yeah, if you want to just chime in and just write and let us know. Um, I'll like I said, I make every effort to get back to everybody's comments. You know, but you have an amazing group here, Steve. For real, for true. I do. You I really do. do. I just, you know, I, I love I love my subscribers, and I and I'm not just saying that because, okay, I've only got the amount the amount of subscribers that I do have. Keep in mind, when I started this channel, I only had six to begin with, and that was people that subscribed to me because maybe I subscribed to their channel, and everything I subscribed to then was nothing but music. Steve, over 300 is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, I it's think it's not. amazing. That's it's a not. that's a lot of eyeballs and a lot of taps and, and a whole it lot is. of all good stuff. But and I everybody never starts at zero anyway. So. But I know, well, I started at six, but in any, it's still. That's right, except for you. <laughs> no, that's just because I, because if I subscribe to somebody, they like to reciprocate back. Right. And right. everything I subscribed to prior to the channel was nothing but music, 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 music. music. And I know that's another 50 song. Yes. Music, music, music. Yeah, true. But Teresa Brewer, if I'm not mistaken. But um, but anytime I would go and post music, I didn't have to go type it in. A lot of the time I could just go to a channel and search it that way. And it's right there. And then I just put it up. So anyway, um, this was a fun conversation that we had. Thanks for having me by. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And, um, you know, be on the lookout on Saturday where you'll be joining me again. And uh, the topic matter is going to be great. So be on the lookout for that. That'll be on Saturday at 1.30. It was a great um, show. Yes, it was. So I want to thank all of you. For tuning in this afternoon. I really appreciate it. And we will see you again on Saturday. Bye, everybody. Bye.